My name is Raven, professional wrestling superstar, former world heavyweight champion, and I want you to choose your four. This is the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer, and I want you to choose your four. Hello, pro wrestling Rushmore. This is Lanny Poppo, formerly the genius of WWE. Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley. Yes, it is, and I want you to choose your four. It's Pro Wrestling Rushmore. It's Pro Wrestling's Rushmore. This is Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Hello humanoids, this is Ian from Squared Circle History, and I want you to choose your four, it's Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Welcome to the only podcast that chooses a topic and allows you, the listeners, to decide who ends up on our ultimate Mount Rushmore of a given topic. And this week our topic is the Mount Rushmore of Intercontinental Champions. Joining me this week is my co-host, the often imitated but never duplicated, Brian! Hello, Ian. Brian, what wrestling shirt are you wearing this week? Tonight, that's a that's a repeat, man. It's a repeat. I'm wearing my Hogan, uh, you know the NWO NWO Hogan with the skull with a gold tooth. It's classic. It's a classic shirt. It is a classic, classic shirt. But you know, I don't like I told you before. I don't have uh, many shirts in my rotation, like you. I mean, I guess I could take one of the ones you came with my son and put it on, but it might yeah. be a little bit of a belly shirt for me. Well, that's all right. That's all right. As long as you're wearing a wrestling shirt. You don't want to see my raw turkey popping out of the bottom of my <laughs> shirt. Oh, you know turkey. I mean? <laughs> yeah. A little hairy raw turkey. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm wearing my Pro Wrestling Crate exclusive Money Inc. shirt with Ted DiBiase and Erwin R. Scheister. And I think tax day was a couple days ago, so pay your taxes. A couple days ago. It was like a couple months well, it's been, it, has been, it has been going on. I don't know. It's been going on since, what, February? Isn't, like, tax time February? Yeah, something like that. So you have, like, all this time. Well, the lovely and talented Sarah is running late this week. Believe, Unacceptable. Believe it or not, this is uh, this is not her main job, so... She's, uh, she's busy with her primary job, so... I'm gonna be filling in here, reading the, uh, the lists. So, with all that said... Let's get going here, Brian. The first list submitted here is from Pat R. the Superstar. He gives us the Macho Man Randy Savage, the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, and Mr. Perfect. So, Brian, if we're going to be kicking things off here with the Mount Rushmore of Intercontinental Champions, we got to talk about the Macho Man Randy Savage. So I'm counting on you to give me some uh, some stats here. On these, on some of these guys. Okay. How uh, how many times did the Macho Man actually hold that title? Once. Once. That's it, right? Only held it once. How long was he champion for? But it was one hell of a reign. Well, I know it was over a year. Uh, really? Yeah. He yeah. defeated Santana. Defeated uh, Tito Santana in the Boston in Garden. In Boston. And for that year, uh, 1986, they said that was one of the best matches that year. Yeah, I heard that. I heard. Uh, they had some good matches there. And then he lost it to Steamboat, WrestleMania 3. Historic. Historic. And what's crazy is, after WrestleMania 3, they continued the Savage Steamboat feud very briefly until they decided that Savage was going to turn babyface. <clears throat> but for a few weeks, they were they were continuing with that feud. So right. who knows where that would have ended up. But, uh, but what do you think? Best Intercontinental title match ever? Like, ever, ever. Savage Steamboat? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And the only argument I think that could be made was, or would be, 
Shawn Michaels versus Ramon WrestleMania 10. Yes. Ladder match. Man. But, I mean, if you want to go, if you want to really be a stickler here, more like classic wrestling match, you got to go with Savage Steamboat. How about like, a, you know, Apollo Crews and Big E in a, in a Nigerian drum match? Hey, man, I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed that match. <laughs> no, it was a good match. You know, the, WrestleMania actually impressed me this year. Um, I don't know if I went into it with low expectations or... No, it did. It was good. It was definitely a good show. Mm. Obviously, Sunday outshined the Saturday, which we I think we all knew that was going to happen. Yeah, and I hear next year is going to only be one night, and I, I don't really like that. I like this two-night format now. I do like the two-night format. Only, All right, so I do and I don't. I like it because it'll break it up and it doesn't give you something to sit down for seven hours in a row. You know what? Who wants to sit down for seven hours in a row through something? You know what I mean? That's a long time. Eight hours sometimes, I guess. The yeah. pre-show... You know what I mean? That's that's a long time to sit through anything. And uh, the two nights is nice to break it up. And it gets more people on the card. You know? Um, what was it? Four, three, three hours per night? Four, uh, it uh, might have been like three and a half hours. Right. Something that's like that's that. plenty, though. That's perfect, yeah. You know? perfect but time. then... Alright, so like this year, you'll get gypped on the Saturday because maybe the match that you really wanted to see isn't on the day you bought tickets for. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... Yeah, that's the downside of the two nights. Right. Being, uh... And you can't really wait to hear the match card, right? I mean... Yeah. You want to buy tickets this year for next year. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, that's true. It really is a roll of the dice, and, uh... Hopefully... Hopefully, it's in your favor. But speaking of Macho Man Randy Savage, he was actually supposed to have a second run as the Intercontinental Champion, and due to politics, the run never happened. Oh, Launch, tell us what happened. Well, the story is that Randy Savage was supposed to dethrone Honky Tonk Man and win the Intercontinental Championship. At SummerSlam? No, at oh. the the same night of the Hogan-Andre rematch on the main event. Mm-hmm. Um, Honky Tonk Man, you know, he, di- he didn't want that. He didn't want to do that, didn't agree to that. Um, you would think Macho Man had more stroke than the Honky Tonk Man. You though, would no? think so, but he was uh, he was the third piece in that equation because they were saying that Ted DiBiase was supposed to win the tournament at WrestleMania four, and then go on to uh, feud with Hulk Hogan, and I would assume have Hogan DiBiase at SummerSlam or even WrestleMania the next year, depending on how long they were willing to drag that program out. So it was supposed to be Hogan DiBiase at WrestleMania five. Uh, rather yes, than let's say that, yeah. So they pretty much gave the gave the title to the Macho Man to keep his mouth shut. Yes, about because not Honky, winning because Honky Tonk Man wouldn't agree to drop right. the title to him. Well, that sucks. Yeah, because I think, I mean, he only had one world title run, also, right? Uh, no, he had two because two. He, he, oh, Flair at WrestleMania eight. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. So, but, but th- I would have liked to seen the Million Dollar Man become champion. I would have liked that to have seen like cool. an extended run yeah. of him as champion. Yeah, that would have been really good. Uh, because he was great. He was a great heel. And even as Intercontinental Champion. And Well, I'm going to save the story for a little later. But Ted DiBiase, even though he never was Intercontinental Champion, he does have a little bit to do with the Intercontinental Championships creation and the history of it. But we'll, we'll save that for uh, for a little bit later on. But uh, the next person that Pat R. mentioned, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. And uh, a unique thing about Shawn Michaels as Intercontinental Champion was he introduced the different colored straps for the title. So he did that before the Warrior did? No, Warrior did it before him. Warrior did it before him. So he well, didn't introduce Intercontin- that. Well, no, you're right, because Warrior had the yellow Intercontinental yeah. Championship. Ah. Warrior introduced them. Warrior introduced them. Ha, stumped him. you again. He did, he did. <laughs> I don't think my voice went went higher, so I don't think Mike's theory is right. No. Nope. That's a little inside joke there. But uh, Shawn Michaels as Intercontinental Champion was great. I mean, he even uh, he even lost it to Marty Jannetty briefly. He did. That was like Marty's first night back from being fired, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Weird. It was, it was a great match from the early days of Raw. But uh, not long afterward, Shawn Michaels won the title back. Did you know I heard Marty was supposed to be the actual Shawn? Like, they when they broke apart. Yeah. They like they thought Marty was going to be the breakout star, and they did. Yeah. Ended up being Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that's crazy. And I mean, 
in a similar story, I also heard that uh, when the Radicals came to the company, that initially Pat Patterson, of those four, he picked Perry Saturn to be the one to uh, be the most successful. And he ended up riding uh, a broomstick, horse. <laughs> or a mop in mop, this case. Moppy, that's what it was. He was riding a horse in WCW, though, wasn't he? Uh, no, that was Travel Guerrero. Oh, was it? it was Pepe. Wow, I'm a mess. Yeah. No, it's all right. But I remember, it's I do Perry remember... Saturn was the one wearing the dress. <laughs> right, I know, I know that. <laughs> was In WCW, he was wearing a dress? Yeah. Wasn't Vito wearing a dress, too? In WWE, he was. In WWE. Yeah, like that? I know. That's it's all over weird, the place. Man. World's colliding, world's colliding. And Brian Pillman wearing a dress? Oh, jeez. All over the place. Well, after Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, and going back to that ladder match at WrestleMania 10, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, really uh, showcasing the Intercontinental Championship there. What do you think of Razor Ramon as the Intercontinental Champion? I, man, I was a huge Razor Ramon fan. I liked, the, I liked the Razor Ramon character. I didn't like the Scott Hall character too much, even though, you know, just playing himself. But I did like the Razor Ramon character. And I, I thought Razor my... Ramon was a great Intercontinental title. Holder. Well, you have against me, man. I don't. Well, I do a good. I just said I, I like you, that man? character. I like that razor. You want, you want to mop your floor? <sighs> I'm gonna clean your. You want me to wash your dishes, man? That's not the Scott I'm Hall. Vacuum you're, your you're not floor, doing. Man? You're not doing Scott Hall. You're doing Razor Ramon. Razor and I am Ramon. a fan of Razor Ramon. Hey yo. Oh God. I survey. <laughs> That's Scott Hall. Hey Brian. <laughs> but Razor Ramon, huh? You're not a fan. Yes. Oh, you are a fan of Razor I am a fan of Razor Ramon. I am not okay. a fan of Scott Hall. Oh, all right. Do you see what I'm saying? I thought you said Spider. Oh, God. Mr. Perfect. What do you think of Mr. Perfect? Great pick. Great pick. Yeah, great pick. Was it a perfect pick? Uh, Not quite because he's not on my list. Mm. You know, I like to think my list is perfect. Okay. All right. So Mr. Perfect did not make the list. Not mine. Made Pat's. It, might make, it might make the final list. And I think it will make the final list. Mr. Perfect? Yes. Okay. Did he make the final list? Mr. Perfect? Yeah. We'll have to find out at the end now, won't we? <sighs> yes, I suppose. Next, we have Mikey from the streets. He gives us another vote for the macho man, Randy Savage. We have the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, the Honky Tonk Man. We have the Ultimate Warrior, and we have Ravishing Rick Rude. So let's talk about the Honky Tonk Man, the longest reigning champion... 454 days as champion. What did you think about his reign? Great pick. The best pick. The best pick. He's got to be there. Honky Tonk Man, in that reign alone, Yep. those many days has to be there at the end. Like, alright, so... Monumental hasn't been touched, hasn't really been close to being touched. What is, what is, what does the Intercontinental, Intercontinental title mean to you? To me? To you. Yeah, to you. It's the workhorse title. It's the title where the guys that are going to go out there and have the best matches, they should be fighting for that championship. I feel like the world title is more for the guys that are drawing the tickets. They might not be the best wrestlers, but they are the biggest attraction. But the Intercontinental title, those are the guys that are going to get... They're going to give you their heart and their soul, their blood, sweat, and tears. Almost a stepping stone for the world title. Sure. And it could... I mean, a lot of guys did use that as a stepping stone. Yes. For the world title. Yes. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's the workers' title. It, well, it used to be the workers' title. Used to be, yeah. I don't know what it is now. I don't think they know what it is now. It's, it's just another prop. It's something. Yeah, exactly. It's just something they had to give someone. That's it. To shut them up. And a lot of times the guys don't even want it because they don't want to carry it through the airports. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Having to explain that, you know, I'm sure that's interesting. But while the honky tonk man was the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion. He was only number four on the list of the people that have held the title the longest as far as combined reigns go. Yeah, but I don't... That doesn't mean anything to me. So combined Combined reigns don't mean anything to me, brother! <laughs> no, it doesn't, because you, you just keep on... It's a hot potato at that point. So you okay. lose it, you get it back... It was, and I mean, while it's impressive, maybe like, you know, if someone had it for 800 and something days in a four-time rain stretch, you know what I mean? Like, that, I, I guess that would be impressive to me. With that said... But I'm a big fan... Don't cut me off, goddammit. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of a guy holding the title for X amount of days, even if it's just one rain. Okay. That's okay. why I like the Honk Tonk Man pick. Alright. And he's on my list. 
<laughs> I think. Yeah, he's on my list, too. But any guesses? With that said, though, any guesses on who held the title the most combined days? Jeff Jarrett. No. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> no, a real... Actually, number 17 on the list. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Man, I don't... Uh... I don't want to be the guy that sits here and just, like, you know, takes all day. Greg Valentine. <laughs> no. No, it's not Greg Valentine. Greg Valentine, 285 days. How many times? The record holder. How many Greg times? Greg Valentine you... only had it once. Oh, that's it. Uh, but the record holder is Pedro Morales. Two reigns, 619 days. Wow. Two reigns. Two reigns. See, that, uh... Too meaningful. I yeah, I would say long that he, reigns. Just on that stat alone, I'd say he should be there, but I don't really remember him, so yeah. I I neglected to put him on my list. Well, Mike mentions next the person that took the title from the Honky Tonk Man, the Ultimate Warrior. No. No. No, man. No all vote. right, all right, no all right. Vote, no love. All right. So, I could see why the war is there because growing up. It was around. I was around the time Mike was growing up. It's around the time I was growing up. I loved the Warrior when I was a kid. I'm sure Mike loved the Warrior when he was a kid. I'm sure you loved the Warriors when you were a kid. Pat, you probably loved the Warrior when you were a kid. You liked the we colors. You liked the tassels. You liked the face paint. You liked the energy. Looked like a girl's bike. You liked the steroids. You liked you liked everything. He was a total package. Then then he got in a ring and he just sucked. Right? I mean, he did. But yeah. I can I can say that now. Back yeah. then, I was like, man, this guy's great. Are you kidding me? It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, of course. He could, like, you know, he's a world beater. Well, well, while we do sit here and say he sucks, yes, he still did have two of the greatest matches of all time. With whom? He had the match with Hogan at WrestleMania six. I wouldn't say it's the greatest match of all time. I wouldn't say it's the greatest match of all you time. You said one of. One of. Because of the mystique. Because of what it was. Yeah, stars of the time. absolutely. And two. then how about Warrior and Savage the next year, WrestleMania seven, the career ending match. Even that, I wouldn't say, was a great match. Really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Oh, I mean, man, I think that match is an absolute classic. But back then, yeah, I mean, I would have said the same thing. I mean, I would have watched that match ten times over, you know, every single day. Because that was just, I loved wrestling that much. Okay. And, like, you know, Warrior was the best thing ever to me. One of the few people to actually defeat the Ultimate Warrior for the Intercontinental Championship is Ravishing Rick Rude, the last person on Mike's list. What do you think of Rick Rude? Rick Rude is great. Rick Rude. I don't awesome. think he was. He. I don't think he made a great Intercontinental Champion. No. But I mean, given the chance and given a, a nice run with it, he could have. He could have definitely made that title. He could have made that title what Bret Hart made it. Okay. Right? Wow. No, no, I'm, I'm being honest. Wow. Like, <clears throat> because I mean, when you mention the Intercontinental title, you you are like, I automatically think Bret Hart, right? Because I was growing up in that era. Sure. Yeah. And he had great matches with Mr. Perfect. Um, he did. He did, right? That, that classic with Roddy Piper. Bulldog. Bulldog. The first ladder match with Shawn Michaels. Right. But I think yeah. putting uh, putting Rick Rude there is like putting um, like a guy like Davey Boy Smith there. Okay, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He might be there for uh, name value, good worker, all that, but as far as actually being a good champion, right? maybe not so much. All right, next we have a list from Mr. X. He gives us the Honky Tonk Man, Randy Savage, Brett the Hitman Hart, and the man who has held it more times than anybody else, Chris Jericho. So let's start with Bret Hart. We just talked about Bret Hart. Uh, Yeah, like I said, you mentioned Bret Hart, and I think a lot of people are going to put him on on their list. I hope he's not there at the end, just because, you know. But does he deserve to be there? I guess... I guess he does. He was a fighting champion, and he did win that championship from Mr. Perfect. Because they told me at the fight. Excuse me? You know damn well the guy didn't want to go out there and do anything. Who, Bret Hart? Yeah, he didn't want to, like, you know, he didn't want to work anybody. He didn't want to have a really good match with Mr. Perfect? He probably bitched about every single person they put in front of him. Do you think it was then, or do you think it was afterwards? Or, like, do you think he developed that, uh, that ego? I think he came out of the womb bitching about something. Okay. Hell, and I didn't like that birth. Right. That lousy, stinking birth. Right. He probably, like, pissed in the doctor's face. And... The way, I didn't like the way it came out. I didn't like the way the doctor slept my ass. 
But yeah, no, he, I mean, does he deserve to be there? Yeah, it's it's a good pick. Whatever. And then how about this? Chris Jericho, he's held the title nine times. More times than anybody else, but combined, he's only had the title for 318 days. Nope, that's not even a year. Not even nine a times, year. and you don't hold, even hold it for a year? Nope. But combined. Still. Not even a year combined. Never mind a year straight. Right. And I mean, but still, though, I mean, Chris it's Jericho, impressive. I understand. He's, you know, he's a big name. I understand, but I think there's a lot more people deserving of that spot than that idiot from Who's spot? Calgary. Jer- Jericho spot. My dog spot? No, not a liver spot. Not a spot like a dog spot. <laughs> Jericho Asking. spot. Alright, so next we have the list from Bobby on the beat. Let's see if uh, he's going to repeat this year with the most correct lists. So he gives us the Honky Tonk Man, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, and Bret Hart. Four respectable names right there, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Definitely a good list, Bobby, but I don't think he got them all right this time. No. No, it's, uh, wow, looking it over. Which is fine, because it, it's not about getting them all right. It's about your personal preference, so. That's true. That is true. You know, some people like beets pickled. No, 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 Some people like cucumbers better pickled. Potato, tomato, you know. <laughs> Next we have the list from Danny in Dartmouth with Chris Jericho, Razor Ramon, Rob Van Dam, and Rick Root. So Rob Van Dam, that's a new name to this list here. What do you think about Rob Van Dam as the Intercontinental Champion? Good pick, but yeah, I think Rob Van Dam TV Champion. I don't think yeah. when I think Rob Van Dam, I don't think Rob Van Dam Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, I mean he he has six title reigns, two hundred eleven days as uh as the title holder, but uh, no, I agree with you. Rob Van Dam more synonymous with the ECW World Television Title. But he should have done more with the Intercontinental title. Let me ask you this. When was here. when was Rob Van Dam there? In WWE? Yeah. What, what year he debuted started? in 2001. 2001. Yeah. All right. Can I give you a stat? Let's hear so it. So, like, all right. When did it stop meaning something? When did it, When did the title, like, that Intercontinental title stop meaning something to you? I think when Stone Cold threw it in the river. And what year was 1997, that? 1997. The end of 1997. Okay. That's fine. But I have a stat here. Let's hear it. And to me, this is about the time where it stopped meaning something to me. Okay. So, from the beginning of 1999 to the end of 2001, now, that title changed hands 35 times. Wow. Not like, it. I'm not talking about, you know, different people, but it could have been the same person that won it multiple times during that stretch. Mm-hmm. That's almost once a month. It's, I mean, it works out to about once a month. So, we'll just say yeah. once a month. That title changed hands. That's what, 23 years? Yeah, well, 23 years. Well, that's so that's three years. No, 99 to 2001. Three years. In a three year stretch, Wait even. Wait a minute. <laughs> From 99 to 2001. Yes. It changed hands 35 times? Yes. Dude, that's ridiculous. That's once a month. That's ridiculous. There's 36 months in three years, right? Oh. oh. God, I guess I wasn't hearing you correctly, man. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you think? Holy cow. Yeah, that that is that's why you call a hot potato. So, after that, I mean, how can you take a title seriously? You're talking guys like Regal that want it, guys like Road Dog. Um Wow, that's outrageous. You think? I do. Yeah. No, I exclaim. I uh I I <laughs> gasped when I I gasped when I saw that stat. <laughs> Exasperated. <laughs> I said, my God, would Randy have wanted this? Would the fans have wanted this? Well, they don't have any choice. I wish I kept my receipt from every pay-per-view I, <laughs> I bought. <laughs> All right, next we have a list from Mike the Wolverine. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Rick Rude, Randy Savage. Four names we have all discussed right here. Maybe a good time right now is to ask you, Brian, what is your favorite design for the Intercontinental Championship? Ah, uh, the one that Mr. Classic. Mr. Perfect held. Yeah, the, the uh, late uh, 80s. Yeah, 90s. like I really don't even know how to describe it. I, that's the one, though. I don't know how to yeah. really describe the pillars, it. pillars, I guess you would call it. The pillars, like a, where is it? It's I right mean, there. pillars. Yeah, yeah, it's back there. I can't really see it, but... Beautiful title. Yeah. You don't like the new favorites. one that they have right now? I don't. No, too much going on, too busy? I, yeah, I guess. I yeah. don't know, man. I just don't... I don't, I don't like it. Okay. 
I'm a big fan of old school, you know? You know no, that. No, I hear you. You know that. I hear you. All right, we're going to keep this train going here. Rolled Snake Eyes sends us a list. The Ultimate Warrior, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Bret Hart in China. Come on, dude. So we're going to start with Greg the Hammer Valentine. Can we just move on to the next list? No, no, no. Let's talk about Greg the Hammer Valentine. He was actually a pretty good champion. He was the most boring wrestler. Yeah, but think about it. Ever. Think about it. That's the guy you want to be the champion. The fans are going to boo him. They don't like him. But we just said that that's a work is title. Show and I'm not saying that Greg Valentine couldn't work. No, it just took him about 20 minutes to get going. Exactly. Sure. He used to come out with that stupid shin guard. <laughs> well, that was just a, a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. the type of shit I remember. Like, maybe, maybe he was going through a soccer phase. That's, and... like the, that's the type of stuff that's like, look at this guy. <laughs> that's what sticks out to me is that shin guard when, when I think look about Greg Valentine. Look at work. The shin guard, the figure four. Who, like... You just you're just mad at him because he had the feud with Ronnie Garvin, and you just couldn't get through it. Man, so he's that guilty by so, association. He, you're probably right. You probably are right about that. I'm gonna come at you, Greg Valentine. <laughs> I'm gonna take you out with I my mean, fists. Two of the most boring wrestlers. I'm gonna in the come world. on you, Greg Valentine. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Magnum <laughs> T.A. said that, didn't he? Magnum T.A. said that, but uh, uh, Ronnie Garvin, he. Uh, you said he was going to come on Greg Valentine? Said, no, I think he said he was going to come on Tully Blanchard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come on you like nobody's ever come before. That was Mr. T.A., uh, Magnum T.A. Mr. T.A. <laughs> He's like a pimp now. <laughs> that was Magnum T.A. that said that, wasn't it? <laughs> no, he did too. But I'm telling you, Ross so Carpen. Two they, guys said two they were going to come on to come. Tully Blanchard was going to get come on by two guys? Very popular fellow. <laughs> the males and the females. What are the chances of that happening? <laughs> In wrestling, I guess anything's possible. No, I'll talk about the, I'll talk about someone like in an interview be like, I'm gonna come on you. Well Dusty was the one like running the show backstage, so maybe Dusty's really the one with the inner desire. But he's telling these guys to say it. And Ronnie Garvin's like <laughs> Dusty, are you sure you want me to say this here? Come on, baby. Yeah, they, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> they're gonna come on. Yeah, come thing. on. Come on, like never. Come on before. <laughs> Dusty, are you sure? <laughs> this isn't good for my character. He's like you never want to come on anybody, baby. <laughs> come on, it's daddy. The, it's the American dream. We want to come on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> anybody driving by or walking by, listening to this conversation. <laughs> Like, wow, it's wild up there. <laughs> wild, baby. It's wild, baby. After you decide who's a champion. Is that real, though? Two people said they wanted to come on Tully Blanchard? I'm telling you, man, yes. Oh, my word. Yes. Tully Blanchard, run. I mean, grab an umbrella with, or something with you. And speaking of which, China. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's China, ridiculous. the only female to win the Intercontinental Championship. <sighs> Defeated Jeff Jarrett, very controversial. Did she win it, like, three times? Yes. Yes, she did. Insane. She defeated more than one male to win this title. Probably between 99 and 2001. Well, yeah. One of the 35. <laughs> Three of the 35. Mm. If you think about it. I stand corrected. It's crazy to think that there there was talks of her facing Stone Cold at SummerSlam 1999. But were they talking about her going over? Th- they wanted to do that. Austin said absolutely not. I don't blame him. You know, I I don't know. Look at things nowadays. Do you think a, a woman's champion, a woman as the world champion nowadays would work? And exactly, exactly my point. So the world's different. You have all these, like, you know, mixed matches and, you know, guys don't know what they are, women don't know what they are anymore. But whatever. Um, we're not going to get into that. But we saw what happened with Tessa Blanchard. Women are trouble. <laughs> they just get trouble, man. Yeah. She won the world title. Yep, from... they end up sending it back to you in the mail. Yeah, and like, yep. she never defended it. She just like, what happened there? It's like, alright, we give you our world title and mm. you just don't want to defend it anymore? Yeah. Go home, home and, go home, you know. Yeah. Go she make me a Mexico sandwich. for a little while. Fled the country. Why? Because she didn't want to give back the title? I don't know, maybe. Really? Really. So she, like, literal, legit, like, fled the country. Yeah, but I'm sure it had nothing to do with the title. Oh, alright. Yeah. But why does she flee the country? 
Oh, her boyfriend, or her now husband's from Mexico. Oh, all right. So they just hung out there. With you the made it sound like she was running from a crime. I know. It kept you. It kept you there. It got you excited. You well, know? no. I mean, we're like here. What was going on? But you don't think she's better? I'm like clickbait over here. You don't think she's better served at home making her husband a sandwich? I'm not gonna touch that. One. <laughs> or, or like, what t- kind of sandwich? <laughs> maybe. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> If I offended everybody, anybody, I'm sorry. I apologize. I think you're going to write the first That's time ever. That's very wrong of me. I meant taquitos. Taquitos? Oh, no. Or like a taco. Well, you say he's from work. Mexico. Will I, you stop? I want to cater to him. I want to cater to his culture. <laughs> she should, too. Oh, boy. Let's keep this. Uh, let's, let's keep going here. Jesus. Steve the Savage. His list consists of Pat Patterson, the Honky Tonk Man, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and Randy Savage. So let's start with Pat Patterson, the first Intercontinental Champion. He's a fraud. A fraud from the mythical tournament in Rio de Janeiro. Supposedly a 64-man tournament that Pat Patterson won. And here's where Ted DiBiase comes back up. At the time, Pat Patterson and Ted DiBiase were feuding over the WWWF United States no, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. The WWWF North American Championship. They're feuding over that title. And what they ended up doing in the end was just creating the Intercontinental title. But for reasons unknown, they just gave it to Pat Patterson. And what happened to the North American title? It ceased to be. So they... They got rid of one title, they created right, another Essentially, title. they replaced the North American title with the Intercontinental title. Yeah, they just wanted to expand. And doesn't Intercontinental, t- t- uh, Intercontinental mean North American? North America? Pretty much, yeah. Or like any continent, like so Asia. Yeah. So like I'm, yeah. the, I'm the Intercontinental t- champion of Asia. Sure. Like the, the champion of a specific continent. Right. Or not even a specific continent, just... A continent at a time, right. I guess. Since you're the intercontinental champion. Why well, don't just call him the, the continental champion? The, the, that certainly makes things a lot easier. Right? Yeah. What is there an inter? What's that's the in the that confuses me. Since I was a child, I was yeah. hoping tonight would be the night that you could explain this to me. No, no, it real this it's. You're failing me. It's dumb, man. Don't blame me. Blame them. Why you betray me? Why you betray me? Everybody betray me, Brian. I count on you for these stats. I come here. I count on you to. Inform me of this stuff. Things I thought about when I was a child. And now I can't even get my answers. I hope you didn't come here to come on me more than anybody else has come. I'm going to come on you <laughs> harder than I've ever come on anybody before in my life. What did you think of Rowdy Roddy Piper's very short reign as Intercontinental yeah, he, Champion? He doesn't deserve to be that. I love Roddy Piper as sure. you know, wrestler and character. Roddy Piper was one of the greats. Really won not the title by the great, Yeah, not a great in the kind of... Intercontinental champion. So no. you got me thinking now about this Intercontinental Continental. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but he is somebody that, under different circumstances, probably could have benefited, maybe from a reign of, of uh, as Intercontinental champion. I don't think he needed a title. No. And you hear that a lot lately, especially yeah. with, like these other podcasts and stuff. But it's it's true if you think about it. Like it would have been nice to see him with a world title reign. You know, sure. a nice little world title run. As the heel he was, being that hot as a heel, um, especially like with the Cindy Lapa days and WrestleMania One, you know, yeah. I think he should have gone to WrestleMania One as champion. Hogan should have beat him for the title at WrestleMania One. Yeah, that would have been excellent. My yeah. opinion, you know. And even if you had just Mister T in Hogan's corner, exactly. And you just you still could have had say Mister T knock out Piper. Or what if you had a Mister T Snooker versus Ondoff and Orton match? Oh, that would have been great. And then just had Hogan great, Hogan yeah. and Piper at the end. Yeah, that would have been awesome. It's funny you say that because my next question for you was, do you think there's anybody in history that would have benefited from becoming the Intercontinental Champion? And the first name that came to mind when I thought of that question was Paul Orndorff. Yeah. I think he would have been an awesome Intercontinental Champion. You're right. I do too, and I, I think again, I think Rick Rude with that title a lot longer than what he had it would have been sure. a great Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, but Paul Ondoff's a great, great pick. Even as a World Champion, Ondoff would have been awesome. Oh yeah, he was just such a great worker, right? Very underrated. Yeah, very underrated. And still, I think what would have helped him is if he had had that 
handlebar mustache. Oh boy. <laughs> way back then. Then, right. Then he would have uh, probably been an amazing intercontinental champion. Just because of that mustache. Just because of that mustache <laughs> that would have put him over. But how about his promos? Remember like that promo we had like in the gym with the Oh yeah. The, the thick women. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It was just like in the salon too, just the salon. Them. Yeah, just putting them down. Oh man. Such it, a it great was, heel. It was great. He but, could talk. Yes. It was he could do it all. Him. And then paired with Bobby Heenan. I mean, that just puts him over the top. Exactly. But he didn't even need Heenan. No, he, he really he didn't. He really didn't, right? But wow. Heenan, Heenan with anybody was great. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like It's kind of like, uh, what's his face now? Paul, uh... Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns don't need him because Roman Reigns is like a hot... He's the hottest talent right now in any wrestling federation, I think, in my opinion. He came yeah. such a long way. Yeah, His sure. promos are so solid. Yeah, that character, he's developed. Whew. It, sh- it has certainly evolved. And it makes you wonder, who's going to be the person to dethrone him? Is it going to be Cesaro? I would like to see it. Yeah. But I don't see it happening. Might be like a quick, uh... Maybe like a quick, uh, title I, reign. I think that program's over weeks. already, though. No. Yeah, he's back. I think he's back working with Ziggler. In that program of him Ooh. and Reigns is old. Who's working with Ziggler? Cesaro. Cesaro Not Ziggler. I meant uh, uh, the rat face guy there. Seth Rollins. Oh, Seth Rollins. Okay. Yeah, he's back and working with him. Okay. Well, who's uh, Roman Reigns going to fight? Now? Yeah. I don't know. But I'd like to see Big E beat him next year at WrestleMania. Or Ooh, Cesaro. That'd be, good. that'd be good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or Isla Dawn. Isla Dawn. <laughs> That's out of left field. <laughs> I told you she's gonna be headlining WrestleMania next year. Oh well, hey, maybe maybe she'll be the first woman to win a male's world championship. While making a sandwich. While making a sandwich. That's impressive. Wow. That is impressive. Be a hell of a match. Oh god. <laughs> All right, Jordan in Tennessee he gives us Chris Jericho, Randy Savage, Mister Perfect, and the Ultimate Warrior. Let's talk a little bit about Mister Perfect. And his reign as Intercontinental Champion, maybe he's somebody that uh, would have benefited from having the title just a little bit longer. Well, give us the stats. What did, how long did he hold it for? Come on, stat boy, you should have this up. Oh, you gotta scroll through and look for it. Mr. Perfect. Look at you. Mr. Perfect, believe it or not, only had two title reigns. Had the title for 406 days. Yep. Put him in there. Put him, put him in the Mount Rushmore? Yeah. And why is that? Why did... That's Mr. a long Perfect... time for two reigns, man, okay, right? Okay, sure, but what did Mr. Perfect mean to the Intercontinental title? <sighs> he elevated that title. It, like we said, it was the workest title back then. He elevated it. Who beat him for it? Texas Tornado? Texas Tornado beat him for it. And Bret Hart. Right, Bret Hart beat it. him for it, too. And those were both excellent matches. That Texas Tornado match, man... I don't think the Texas Tornado deserved that title. No. He didn't. No. How long was this reign for? Oh, not very long at all. <laughs> exactly. Only a couple months. Well, who he beat him for it. that title? Mr. Perfect. All right, so I, I get it. So, right. so he was just a transitional champion. Right. But why, see, that's the thing. Why beat him? Yeah. If you're just going to give it back to him like, a couple months later? Well, I think the way they were looking at it was, here's a new guy coming into the company... They want to, you know, make him mean something right out the gate, so why not have him beat one of your major champions? And that's fine, See but how the people react to him. And if you're going to give the guy an eight-month run, I could see that. Maybe that was the plan, and then it just failed. They, just, they were like, wow, well, he's not, not good. I mean, you think about it, he won it in August at SummerSlam, and then lost it by December. So that's an adequate amount of no, time. That's not bad, all right. You know? Yeah, it's really not that bad. I thought it was shorter than that. But what would you think of Terry? That's uh, what she said. What did you think of Kerry Von Eric? Uh, I think he was great. I think he came to the company far too late. I think if he, if he had come to the company during the rock and wrestling era, then he would have been serious competition for Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's always going to be the top guy. Always going to be the top guy. But you could have had Kerry Von Eric as the number two. Say you have Kerry Von Eric and Paul Orndorff feuding over the Intercontinental title at, for, at like, WrestleMania 2. Yeah, theoretically, that'd, that'd be a great match. Looks like a great match on paper, but you don't know how they would gel in the ring. 
No, no, this is. I think the armchair and, booking here. I right. guess. And Kerry Von Erich had a great look to him. Sure. Paul Ondorf yeah. had a great look to him. I think they would match up great in the ring. I think so. But I think Paul Ondorf was leaps and bounds ahead of Kerry Von Erich sure. as an in-ring worker. Which but, says a lot considering his pedigree, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the fans would, the fans have so much more sympathy for Kerry Von Erich, meaning if he's getting beaten down by Orndorff, they're, you know, they're gonna have the sympathy for him. They're gonna be cheering for him. They're gonna right. rally, rally for him. Um, I don't know. I think, I think he would have worked great uh, during that time. Yeah. I think Kerry Von Erich, Randy Savage would have been good too. That's true. Uh, and that would have been good too. Say, say Elizabeth is looking at Carrie Von Eric. With lust in her eyes. Lust in her eyes. Shit, and he's gonna come on her like he's never came on anyone before. I, it, hey, that would certainly uh, spice up the feud in a different way. But uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have a list here from the Extreme Dragon. He votes for Chris Jericho, RVD, the Honky Tonk Man, and Pat Patterson. So Pat, Patterson, Pat Patterson, he's there because he was the first one. Yeah. And I was concerned putting him on my list until I, until you told me that he's a fraud and there was no real tournament. Yes, it was a fake tournament, a faux tournament. You know what happened? I took him right off that list. Wow. I said, wow, Pat. You have a new list. No. Not this Pat, not Pat R. No, not Pat R. No. Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson, okay. PP, not PR. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I took him off that list. I said, Mr. Patterson, you gotta go. Oh boy. But no, I. So, he must have went banana. Did he? <laughs> we no. don't know now. We don't know. We'll never know. Yeah. But go on. All right. Well, we have a list here from my boy Benny, Pat Patterson, Chris Jericho, Mr. Perfect, and the Honky Tonk Man. Jericho's on there a lot. I don't like that. Hey. I think he's on there a lot only because of how many reigns he's had. It means something to people, I guess. You know, I, think about it. He came into the company in 1999. And yeah. he was still winning that Intercontinental title. In 2016? 17? Something like that, yeah. 18. So, he's synonymous with that title. Uh, of course, the Honky Tonk Man, longest reigning. There's Mr. Perfect again. But, alright, when you say Intercontinental title, what do you think about, like, automatically? Automatic, like that. That's tough because I do think of Jericho. Really? I do, yeah, I do think of Pat Patterson. See, I think of Jericho as the first ever unified champion. Okay. Like that's just my instant thought when someone says Chris Jericho. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I and for... his a thousand four list. What's hold, that? His one thousand four hit li- hold list. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I love I that segment. You. It is a good segment. <laughs> But yeah, no, so that's, that's, when someone says Jericho, that's what I think about. Alright. Uh, I also think of Randy Savage. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite match? I guess that would, that would be Randy Savage, Ricky Steamboat, Steamboat right? yeah. I mean, and, right. like you said, the Michaels, Razor match. Do you like the first ladder match between Michaels and Razor better than the second ladder Absolutely, match? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely, especially like with, uh. You know, Michael's messing up that ladder spot. Who was... They couldn't get the belt hung right, right? Yeah. Michael's yeah, got he was all supposed pissed to, like, off. jump and grab the title, and it was supposed to unsnap Right, but I'm talking about right in the beginning of the match, when they were trying to hang the title up to get... Gotcha. To go up. Yes. Michael's getting pissed, and he ended up fixing it himself. You're right, yeah. So he essentially screwed himself, because... <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, that's true. That's karma. <laughs> Nothing ever went the way it was, it was planned. But Razor, dude, Razor was awesome. Razor was great. And, like, Michael's just... He carried those matches, obviously. Michael's and uh, Razor. Michael's carried those matches. Yeah. Which just showed what kind of a great worker he really is. And Ric Flair said that... That WrestleMania 10 match was Shawn Michaels versus a ladder. Yeah, pretty much. Scott Hall pretty much had the night off. Pretty much. He's right. Alright, so... The list here from Paul Paulicious. Pat Patterson again. The Honky Tonk Man, Randy Savage, and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, Shawn Michaels might be there at the end. You know what I notice? 
Not many Bret Hart's on these lists. No, no, I think you're going to be uh, quite surprised at the end, or quite happy, I should say, at the end. Oh, really? So that's yeah. a spoiler. Yeah. Which tells me Bret Hart is not there at the end. Well. Even though he deserves to be. Wow. This is <sighs> unbelievable. He does, dude. I mean, <laughs> when you... hey, it's funny, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm on Facebook going back and forth with my buddy about Bret Hart and, you know, how much I think he sucks. <laughs> and the guy I coach literally with, he chimes in. And he's like, oh, no, man, Bret Hart was great. And I was like, no, Tim, he is not. I was like, you know, and I just started giving him a reason why he's a huge bitch and just cries yeah. about everything. He's bitter at the world. So uh, <clears throat> this was like maybe four or five months ago. Okay. We never really talked about it. We just kind of went out on Facebook. So we're at practice Wednesday, and, you know, my kid's up to bat. Yeah. He, was, he wasn't swinging right, and he was, like, having trouble making contact. So he's trying to get his mind off it just to, like, you know. So I was like, hey, who's your favorite wrestler? So he's like, I don't know, it's a tough one, whatever. And he goes, mine is Bret Hart. Best I remembered. And I had a full-fledged argument with him. We stopped Little League practice. And I was <laughs> arguing. And I, again, ran down the reasons why Bret Hart sucks. Yeah. In front of all the kids. In front of all the kids. Wow. <clears throat> and, like, a lot of them were like, no, no, he's great. And I was like, no, you shut your mouth. Yeah, so like, a few of the kids, like, a couple of them, you know okay. what I mean? I was like, you shut your mouth, you bench next game. <laughs> so I sent them, and then I, you know, they ran a couple of laps, and you know, you made the kids was, run laps for liking Bret Hart. Well, yeah, I mean, they got <laughs> they got to learn somehow. <clears throat> you don't disrespect your coaches. <laughs> no respect for yourself. <clears throat> but Brody knows better. He didn't. Uh, he didn't disrespect me. He agreed. Bret Hart wasn't that great. All right, good. He said he wasn't that great. Good. Do you know who his favorite wrestler is? No, I don't. Mm. He's like, he doesn't really... You'll ask him, and he's like, he just sits there forever to think about it. I'm like, alright, forget it. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of choices nowadays, too. Are there? Well, it's not the same anymore. It's just not the no, same. No, it's not the same anymore at all. Oh, well. Oh, uh, sorry, we're not on a rant about that. That's alright. Probably okay. boring. Boring our listeners, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> alright, we have a submission here from Suplex Sam. Pat Patterson, no. Randy Savage, the Honky Tonk Man, and Razor Ramon. <sighs> Pat Patterson's at the end, isn't he? He's going to be there. We shall see, man. Oh. It is, uh, man, it's a photo finish here. Really? Oh boy, yeah. We're almost there, Brian. Four more lists. Next, Shep from Shepland, Randy Savage, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, and Steve Austin. Steve Austin, I mean, to his credit, won the championship with a broken freaking neck. Yeah, but, I mean, how he won it, and I know it wasn't any fault of his own, but, yeah. like, it was a weak match. A weak way to win it. It wasn't, like, memorable. Well, it was memorable because he almost broke his neck. He did break his neck. Did he? I thought you said, I damn near broke my neck. Did he break it? Oh, wow. Sure was broken? I don't think it was broken. Oh, maybe not. I'm going to stump you again. It pro- that probably explains why he came back so soon. Probably. Beyond being a house. Well, he didn't have the uh, the Gary Wolf halo on or anything. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Stone Cold Steve Austin giving people the stunner while wearing a halo. <laughs> <laughs> they should have done something like that, though. That would have been great. It would have been a lot more sympathetic. You know, and imagine if, if they stole the angle, because think about it. Right. If he's wearing a halo, somebody's going to screw with him. Can you imagine if The Rock was the one to shake the halo? Damn, man, that'd have been great. That that would have been interesting. Or Triple H. Triple H, Austin. Austin was the one with the halo on. Wow. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes, he was. Um, I meant to say Shawn Michaels. Oh. <laughs> Shawn Michaels would have been good. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to shake my own damn halo. <laughs> Feel myself. But, yeah. So, that would have been a great angle, I think. Okay, yeah. Monday morning quarterback. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah. Hey, maybe. Just maybe. Someday, if the moon and the stars align, we'll have our own animated show where we can, you know, Go decide, back and decide who fights who <laughs> and how the feud would have gone. Wouldn't that be cool, Brian? You're the mastermind, Ian. I don't even know. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to where to begin with this. <laughs> are you talking like animation, like clay animation, like are you talking about a comic any, book type any video? Animation. 
What do you, I don't, any animation. I don't follow. Any animation. Though. I don't huh? follow. Huh? You like cartoons, huh? You like comic books, <laughs> huh? Huh? You like YouTube, huh? Uh, Japanese anime, you can have everyone coming on each other. <laughs> Harder than anybody's ever come before. Harder than anyone's ever come on anyone before. All right, let's get through these last three lists here before we get into a sticky situation. Ugh. Hunter LNR, Pat Patterson, The Honky Tonk Man, Chris Jericho, Razor Ramon. I don't think Hunter has ever watched a Pat Patterson match. Well... Has he? I don't know. I, I can't speak for him. I can't speak for him. I certainly never showed him a Pat Patterson match. Have you ever watched a Pat Patterson match? Oh, yes. In, yes, its, entire, in its entirety? Yeah, of course. Oh, he has God. great matches, man. Great matches with Bob Backlund. Awesome <sighs> matches with Sergeant Slaughter. Well, yeah, I, I did watch that. No, that's the only Pat Patterson match I've watched was that street fight in New York there. Okay. Right. Rocky Johnson, he had a feud, uh, he had a feud with him. No. No? Okay. Alright. No problem. How cool would have a uh, a feud would have been between Chris Jericho and Razor Ramon? I think you were gonna say Chris Jericho and Pat Patterson. That would've worked too. That would've worked too. Um Jericho Ramon, huh? Yeah. Were they there at the same time? No. They weren't. I don't know. What about Ramon and the Honky Tonk man? That would have been I don't know. Yeah? I don't know. Like one oozes machismo. Honky one Tonk the other Man wasn't a great worker. What's that? Honky Tonk wasn't a great worker. Did you hate him? Uh, I didn't hate him as a kid. No. No. I didn't like him. He wasn't like one of my favorites or anything like okay. that. But like I, I wasn't like ah, god damn, I beat this guy. No, I didn't ride, what I did ride find was cool like that. was that he would like get counted out. He would get disqualified just to keep that title. Ultimate heel move. That's what made him a great champion. Because he knew how to hold on to the title while losing. True, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he didn't. The writers did. Well. But you know what I mean. <laughs> but he played it off great. Okay. He was the greatest, like, just chicken shit heel. Just, you know, I'm going to do anything I can to hold on to this title. You're not going to take it from me. Okay. You know what I mean? Know what I mean. You get it? Why you mercy? <clears throat> yes. Yes. All right. What are you doing? I know what am I doing? Get ready for the next list. Well, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Ask him. Cashman and Plymouth. Randy Savage. Mr. Perfect. Razor Ramon. And the first vote for J-E double F. J-A double R. E-E double T. That's double J. I used to like it when Carl Rob Parker used to read out his name. <laughs> my, my, bro. <laughs> like, Jay! Double F! <laughs> Jay! Double R! E! Double T! That's pretty good, man. That's Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, so, man, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, huh? Yeah. It's another boring wrestler to me. Well. He was very, very boring to me. Okay. I was never a huge Jeff Jarrett fan. And then, again, when he got older, he kind of went back and saw his work and, like, he was just good at his job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he was. I didn't like him because he was good at his job. Yeah. No, he, he was good at getting the heat from the fans. Right, absolutely. Very easy to dislike. Exactly. And, uh, no, he was good. He was good. And those promos from, like, The Office, when he was, like, you know, smile and his gold tooth would, like, you know, just, what do you call it, blink? Shine? Shimmer. Shimmer. Glisten. His gold tooth was, like, just, they were shine. Ha <laughs> ha! Like, Ain't that great? <laughs> I love that whole character about being the country singer and having yeah. a music video and yeah. Didn't they walk out on McMahon during that time? They did, and it didn't really make sense no, because they didn't. were in the middle of something great. Exactly. And, but I guess his father Jerry was like, um, son, <laughs> I'm in the um, well, you know, WCW, you know. That, that, well, you know, down in Georgia, and I can get you a job, well, you know, down here. In Diddy? They went down there? 
Uh, ultimately, no. He, he ended up going back. back right? Yeah. Then left, went to WCW. Then came back. He was always jumping around, kind of like Sid. Right. Just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even like remember the years, like in between, what years, he, what year he was where. That'd be a good question. Did the Intercontinental Title change hands more times between '99 and 2001, or did Jeff Jarrett jump between promotions more? Well, I don't think Jeff Jarrett jumped between promotions 35 freaking times. Humor me. <laughs> it's like. Has the Big Show turned feel, face and heel more times than the Intercontinental title changed hands that is true. between 1999 <laughs> and 2001? That, that is a ridiculous number. And thought. Well, we have one list remaining here, and it's from Daryl in Georgia. He gives us Razor Ramon, Randy Savage, Mr. Perfect, and Chris Jericho. Good list. It's, you know, like I said, I don't really think about Jericho too much. As great workers, though. Four great workers, though. Absolutely. The that's, workers title. That's what that title's about. Was about. Maybe still is. Maybe it's coming back to that now. I don't know. We'll have to see how Apollo Crews does. Do you think they'll have somebody break the Honky Tonk Man's record? Think no. About, they had somebody break Demolition's record for the tag team titles. Yeah. Think they'll do it for Honky Tonk Man? No. No? They're way too, like, just all over the place for that. Yeah. They can't keep something on. They need somebody else, like a Rob Van Dam. Well, like, yeah, absolutely. Like, Roman Reigns right now, they would be stupid to take that title away from him before WrestleMania. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it would be, like, then, over a year's reign. But rain these, for Reigns. Rain for Reigns. Yeah. But they're stupid enough that they will probably do it for some stupid reason. Yeah, I don't know. It would be nice to see them get back to the whole territory system. You know, even if they build their own territory system? No, what do you mean? I don't understand. I don't all right, so let's say... All right, let's say right now you have Roman Reigns and you have Cesaro, and they have this giant feud. Yeah. And in the end, Cesaro doesn't win the title. Mm-hmm. Now, you still want to have something for Reigns to do, but you want to keep him away from the title. So let's say you send Cesaro to NXT. You mean Cesaro? Cesaro. You want something for Cesaro to do. Or anybody in this. No, I'm you just said Reigns. Cesaro as a, you said you want something for Reigns to do. Reigns is your champion, so he's already out mm-hmm. doing something. Well, you could do something with Reigns, too, where he defends the title across multiple territories. But at, for Cesaro as well, if you don't want him to win the championship, send him to another territory or send him to another promotion. Send him down to NXT, have him feud with uh, Karrion Cross, or send him over to NXT UK and have him feud with Walter. Okay. Or if yeah, they I do, like, saying. NXT Japan or something like right. that. No, I see, I see what you're saying, but they won't. They won't do that stuff. They want to keep them there. They want to just... I don't know, man. It's tough because, obviously, you can't have two world champions on the same thing. Mm-hmm. On the same brand. So, like, yeah, I understand this, too. There's one on Raw, there's one on SmackDown. Sure. But not everybody can have that title. And I think Reigns deserves to have that title right now. And why not have Cesaro feud with Apollo Crews next? Okay. That would be good. All right, go after that. That would be good that. for him in the meantime, at least. Right. And you could build, like, a, you know, three or four-month program with them, too. Mm-hmm. Even if you throw them into tag matches. You have that big bastard that's with Apollo Crews right now. Throw him in a tag match against Cesaro and someone else. Okay. You could you could build off that without having them face each other for the title every single time. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make it interesting. Right. Spice it up. And then maybe at WrestleMania, next WrestleMania, put Cesaro back into the title picture and... That's ultimately where he wins it. Maybe he wins the Rumble. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he wins there the Elimination go. Chamber or something like there that. There you go. That'd be great. To get there. But then they would probably just do the same thing they did with Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Same thing they did with Coffee Kingston. Shit, the same thing they did with Zack Ryder when he won the Intercontinental title. Yeah. Huge moment at WrestleMania. The guy mm-hmm. finally does something. I know you don't like him much. But, like, that was a huge moment for the guy. And then all of a sudden, next night, he loses it. Yep. On Raw. Too. Yeah, it just seems like a waste. Right. Who did he lose it to? Yes. That I don't know. Who did Zack Ryder lose the Intercontinental title to? The Miz. Uh, it was The Miz, yeah. It was The Miz. That's right. And yep. I don't know, man. I don't get it. And I, I'm not saying I don't like The Miz. I think The Miz is fine. Sure. But 
I mean, give just the why guy, have the moment? Right. It's just gonna mean nothing. Just give the guy a break. Let him let him run with it for two months, three months. See what yeah. happens. See if the fans really get behind them. Yeah, because yeah, the fans yeah. were behind them at the time. They even bought that stupid show off them, the Long Island Ice Z oh, story. Oh yeah, the YouTube show. So they buy the show off them to do nothing with it, just so he won't get over with it. Yeah. But don't don't they say they want their guys to get over? They contradict themselves a lot. Absolutely. A lot. They, I guess that's a... It's like, uh, yeah, we want these guys to get over. If it's the guy we want to get over. Exactly. If it's within their plans and it goes off without a hitch, right. then that's another story. All right, Brian. Who is on your Mount Rushmore? Oh, God, you put me on a spot. A lot. Who's spot? A lot. A dog spot? All right. I got it. I got it. You know, I'm surprised like no one put Pedro Morales on their list. No, and I just think it's, you know, because it's so long ago. Right, exactly. But so was Pat Patterson, and That's because true. he was the first because one. Because he was the first, yes. Even though Pedro Morales was probably a better champion than him. Yeah, the people certainly supported him, that's for sure. Do your research, people. <laughs> no, all right. So, mine, Randy Savage. Sure. One title reign, 414 days, speaks for itself. Well over a year with that title. He made the best of it. Had great matches with that title. Ricky Steamboat match, obviously, was the best one. Um, so, I think that qualifies him to be there. Honky Tonk Man. Held it 44 more days than Savage, with one reign. 454 days as IC Champion. Shake, rattle, and roll. That guy would do anything to keep that title. Great heel. Did his job phenomenally. I think he qualifies to be there in my opinion alright right, third one Shelton Benjamin wow nobody mentioned him so that guy could do it all in the ring total package Shelton Benjamin right sure um, three title reigns for him 354 days I gotta be honest it's kinda like a little uh, not selfish but just personal reason because I just think he was a great worker he was. I enjoy Shelton Benjamin's still matches. Is. Still is, yeah, exactly, yeah, right? He's still going. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy his matches, still do. Um, I can do it all. So, he's one of my personal favorites. I think he deserves to be there. You other people don't, you're wrong. Um, last one. Last one, Ian. Ready for this one? Let's hear it. Don Morocco. Oh, man, nobody mentioned Don Morocco. The Rock. Awesome. Matches with Snooker. Yep. Man, I mean, two title reigns for him at a whopping 541 days. Yes. You know, had matches against Tony Atlas, Rocky Johnson, Snooker. I mean, Morales. He wrestled Morales, too. He did. You know? He did. His promos were really good, too. Awesome promos. Morocco is so underrated. Very. And, you know, nobody voted for Tito Santana. As I look through this, nobody voted for him. And- what was his stats? Uh, Tito Santana. Let's see. Tito Santana. Oh, boy. No luck Two for... reigns, 443 days. Yeah. See, there you go. Overall, the fifth... Uh, the fifth longest reigning combined uh, days with the title. He had, a, he had an awesome uh, stretch of matches with Paul Orndorff, Cowboy Bob Orton... Even Greg Valentine at cage matches. They headlined Madison uh, Madison Square Garden. So Tito Santana, another underrated person. No love for Chico. No love. Um, but do you think that maybe people remember some of these guys for like what they've done lately? So like when someone doesn't think of Tito Santana because they think about the Matador. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So they think about yeah. like their most recent gimmick and like, no, not that guy. Well, I think a lot of people, if you don't remind them of these people... Like, think about it. Tito Santana, has he ever come back to do, like, a cameo or spot, like, anywhere? No. Never. You know? Well, he came back to, like, do the uh, Spanish announcing a couple That's times, true, yeah. That's... And it was in the Hall of Fame. They inducted him right. in the Hall of Fame, at least. But, you know, he never did, like, a backstage segment. No. Never did the flying burrito to somebody to win the hardcore title. Well, or what's he going to do? He's going to wave a red red cape at someone and let them charge him? He could, maybe. I mean, shit. He could have managed uh, Los Matadors with El Torito. Uh, oh, God. You know? That was just a bad idea from the beginning. I think that would have made it worse, to be honest with you. 
<laughs> yeah, probably would have. <laughs> You're right about that. So, who's on your Mount Rushmore? Are you? you want me to choose my four? Please do. Okay, so I'm going with the longest reigning, the Honky Tonk Man. The man who had the most reigns, Chris Jericho. I'm going to go with the originator, Pat Patterson. Ugh. Because even though the tournament was fake, you had to have somebody get the ball rolling. So I'm going to go with Pat Patterson. So have him legitimately beat somebody. Well, yeah. I, I still don't <laughs> understand that. Um, but then and then I'm going to go number four, my personal favorite, Macho Man Randy Savage. So those are four, my four right there. But let's uh, let's go with the stats here. We're gonna we're gonna do things a little bit differently here. We're gonna start with the bottom. We're gonna go from the bottom to the top. So with two votes, RVD, with three votes, Rick Rude, and the Ultimate Warrior, with five votes apiece, Mr. Perfect, Shawn Michaels, and Bret Hart, with six votes, Pat Patterson. So is he on it? Now. Oh, yeah. Mount Rushmore. Seven votes each. Chris Jericho and Razor Ramon. Nine votes. The Honky Tonk Man. Eleven votes. Randy Savage. So Savage, Honky Tonk Man, Razor Ramon, and Chris Jericho. That is our Mount Rushmore of Intercontinental Champions. I like it aside from Jericho. Not uh, No love for Jericho, huh? I got plenty of love for Jericho as a wrestler and stuff, but I, not as an Intercontinental Champion. Okay, fair enough. You know. Well, that is our list for this week. Next time we get around to doing this wonderful Pro Wrestling Rushmore show, our topic is going to be the Mount Rushmore of Baby Faces. We have to even it out. We did the episode for the heels, so now we got to do an episode for the Baby Faces. So that'll be the next one we do. So. If you want to submit a list to us, you can contact us by going to Instagram, squared.circle.history. You can go on Facebook. There is a group there, Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Or you can go to our bread and butter, YouTube, Squared Circle History. So for Brian. Good night, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. Till next time, Ian. Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> Sarah's not here, so things are a little different. She sends her well wishes. But for me, thank you for listening, and good night.